I'm talking about how, at a certain point, there were only 40 seconds to go before the show went off the air and the match wasn't quite over yet. I realized I'd better hurry. So I start by saying, I guess I'd better hurry. There are all of 40 seconds left before lockdown is history. Are you sure this is a good mic? Yeah. Does it sound all right? Yeah. Sounds better than this one? Yeah. What if I put them together? <laughs> <laughs> Earl Hebner, the referee, is practically begging for us to take this home. I, I should really be standing, right? Just look bushly. No? Yeah. You're good. It's not very good. You're fine. It's not very befitting of a uh, number one New York Times selling author who's sitting down because of a, a knee injury suffered in a sock related <laughs> what's that just pretend JR is next you'll just be like commentating I don't ever want to really go <laughs> unless there's a voice in my ear going that's enough of the pronouns <laughs> practically begging me to take this baby home, but I've got one more move left in me. It's a classic Foley running knee in which I don't really connect with my knee at all, but knee sounds so much cooler than flaccid inner thigh. <laughs> <laughs> this knee is a little special, uh, special, however. I dropped the bat down at the last second so that the bat, not the flaccid Foley thigh, makes contact with the stinger. Ooh. Even those heartless bastards in Philadelphia felt that one. <laughs> and with good reason. As a laceration requiring 16 stitches opens up immediately over my right eyebrow. <laughs> what the heck? You see, in all the hundreds of instances where I charged him with the knee, I'd never had a steel cage to stop my momentum. Look, here comes a charging foley. See? There's my head bouncing off a steel bar. <laughs> Down goes Foley. In goes 16 big ones. 16 bad boys. 16 stitch roonies. <laughs> I had hoped to pull off a move so devastating that even a physically exhausted has-been with bad knees like me could have the time needed to mount one last valiant climbing effort, which would have been perfect if I just had a little time to spare. But I'm down to 20 seconds. I might need to forsake the drama of a slow climb in favor of a quick exit. Tangent time. I think back to 1986, to the words spoken by an 84-year-old woman when she awoke to find me sleeping in my underwear on her couch. <laughs> You've got to get out now, Mickey. You've got to get out now. I was supposed to be a guest at the home for the entire summer, but a few weeks into my stay, a heat wave struck the area, and all of that clothing seemed somehow unnecessary. <laughs> Heeding those words, I find the fortitude to attempt one last escape, and I'm shocked at how easily I'm able to climb the mesh. I had anticipated big trouble and was quite pleased to be proven wrong. Sting shakes off the effects of the running bat to the face and mounts an escape attempt of his own, climbing the cage in the corner of the ring right, right of me. To the right of me. I have the head start, but the stinger is gaining. I'm reminded of the children's classic, Race to the Outhouse, by Willie Make It. <laughs> Illustrations by Betty Don't. <laughs> which along with Tiger's Revenge by Claude Balls <laughs> was probably my favorite bedtime story. <laughs> Not counting the, the timeless Chinese fable Spots on the Wall by Hu Flung Poo. <laughs> Tangents for you.